a few tips on how to shop for peptides. I first want to start with what kind of Gloria had uh, pretty much touched on at the very end of the second part, which is, you know, how we tier certain peptides and their skin concerns. So to summarize, we think peptides are pretty good at fighting wrinkles. However, we don't consider these that they're going to be replacing retinols, vitamin C, any of these home peels in certain of their level of wrinkle fighting benefit. Also, I was going to add that, but this is also why it can be such a good secondary active mm -hmm. to um, your retinols and whatnot yes. in anti-aging. Because if you remember the first segment when Victoria broke down all the pathways to act on, it is none of the same or it's not even similar pathways to retinols and vitamin yeah. C, glycolic acid, etc. So it really does bring a different angle to this. That's a really great point. And then also because peptides are pretty vanilla. There's very low um, irritation potential. Um, so this is kind of, it just feels like an easy one that can slot into, you know, routines with heavy hitter actives. So that's the first tier. Less impressive is the skin brightening claims. Just because you guys all know hyperpigmentation is very stubborn. Um, so, and we just haven't seen a ton of data around great peptides tackling this concern. Possibly interesting is the soothing category. There are more, in, uh, we would say, peptides that are coming out yeah. in this arena. And then I think Gloria has a lot of feels. It's the, the way, way not interesting uh, skin concern is the preventative aging realm. Yeah, I think peptides marketing has been gearing towards younger and younger audiences in recent years. I first noticed this when my... 14 year old niece said, I want the proteiny for Christmas. I'm no. Like, yeah, I'm like, no. Why? It's like, oh, TikTok says it's really good. I'm like, yeah, but what are you using it for? So it's just, again, it's one of those things where, you know, peptides are usually positioned as actively treating things like wrinkles, sagging, whatnot. Uh, in terms of prevention, we don't see a lot of data around, or at least it's not super interesting. To me, I just feel like there's not a lot of solid reasons for a very young person to have um, peptides in their routine for anti-aging purposes uh, or age prevention purposes. Um, soothing is an angle where younger people can consider um, peptides, but not this. And then, and the other category I already mentioned is pigmentation. There are some peptides that will be positioned as brightening, and it just the data is not really very sexy. <laughs> we have a lot of episodes covering heavier hit. Um, covering ingredients in this category, like our arbutin, hydroquinone uh, type of episode, tranexamic acid, kojic. I have not seen a single peptide for hyperpigmentation where I look at it, I'm like, wow, I wish you, you tested it against hydroquinone because I bet it would do really well. Mm, nada. <laughs> I did also want to point out like, as a formulator uh, that has we've worked with peptides, there's a couple formats that I don't love peptides in, but mm -hmm. they are in. I was going to say sunscreens and makeup. I yeah. just don't think it's necessary. I don't think it provides any benefit. Um, peptides have, they also have their quirks as well. Things like penetration, needing enough to do something and get the benefit. And it's just with all of that competing with sunscreen filters, makeup systems and powders, I just, I just don't think it's necessary. You don't have to pay extra to get these actives in those formats. And then finally, um, before we end, I did have a couple maybe... Uh, annoying but hard questions for Gloria that I did want to oh. ask for fun. Um, mm -hmm. The first one is, <clears throat> uh, obviously we have our double play where we pair retinol and peptides, but if you had to choose, let's say you, you have been using the ordinary, okay? How do you feel about upgrading to protein-y? <laughs> uh, you know, like the price difference, you know, like, do you feel that allure, like, would you, if you had the the budget for it, like, how compelled do you feel? You know, I think this is one of those categories where uh, in any other category, like a retinol or hyperpigmentation is a big one where when we talk about skincare price points, um, we're not talking about the extremes, like the $1 creams versus the $400 creams. We're talking about ranging maybe 20 to 150 I feel like in all these other categories, I have their products in each price tier that I can say, hey, this is great for this, and this is a step up from that, and this is a, a product that can justify this price tag, yada, yada, yada. Peptides is very strange to me. It's not linear, right? The What's using protein is not the same blend that's used in uh, in the ordinary. So I don't even know if it's an up 
upgrade other than a price tag upgrade. <laughs> yeah. So general, it sounds like you feel pain. <laughs> I feel pain. And I think honestly, if you and the thing is, when you are talking about changing our peptide products, because it's so nonlinear, it's hard to it's even between peptide products, it's not on the same comparison scale, right? So oh, if like. I've been using um, the ordinary, and I think it's been working well for me, I honestly wouldn't even know what the logical next upgrade would be. I would just stick with what works because Proteiny mm -hmm. wouldn't be in your routine the same manner at all. True. So, it is a, yeah. it is more of a lotion product for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I have a, one last question. For sensitive skin types that, let's say, don't do well with some of the main actives, for example, retinol, mm -hmm. would this be a category you recommend in replace? Or would you have them start really looking into like the derivatives, like the mysterious derivatives? Like where, how do you feel about its place for maybe the sensitive skin types? Huh, okay, um, mm, that's a good one. I don't really know because I think anecdotally, a lot of people who are only mildly sensitive, so let's say you are a little sensitive to retinol, you might have better luck with Bakuchio. But it's it's also, it's not super direct because um, just with an, using retinol as an example, I myself am very retinol sensitive. And it turned out Bakuchio also hurts my skin. <laughs> and and Ret Grand Active is one that is very gentle on me, but also makes me question if it does anything. So this whole category is like very wishy-washy for me in terms of, um, so for me, I think the derivative still makes me feel like I'd rather make retinol work than to mm. commit to a derivative. If you're, but if you're very, very sensitive, it is very likely that most, if not all of the retinoids in the umbrella will give you some level of trouble. Yeah. And in that case, the, Thing though, even though as a chemist, I don't think per, um, I don't think peptides can replace retinol. They don't work the same way. It's just it's just not the same. But if you really can't tolerate a retinoid, instead of uh, let's say you try like two or three different retinoids, then they all suck for you. Instead of just getting stuck in the cycle of okay, oh, just one more retinol product, <laughs> I think this is it. Um, <clears throat> I will say stop torturing yourself and your skin and your time peptides is still worthy of trying actually recently we got a comment on instagram asking us about actually neck creams um she said that her neck area is very sensitive to uh mm. to retinoids and she really doesn't want to use a retinol but so many neck cream nowadays have some sort of mm -hmm. retinol in it it's true and i looked into the products a little bit and a lot of uh neck creams with interesting data has some level of peptides in them so mm. yeah, so I guess my really long rant can be boiled down to while I would never think of it as a direct replacement of retinoids, um, I would recommend it uh, for those of you who are like, I can't do this retinization anymore. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. And with that, to sum up, we're just going to sum it up in all honestly one statement, and that is peptides can be a great secondary active for anti-aging mm -hmm. benefits. Um, mm -hmm. It is easy to slot in. You typically are going to buy them in a serum format. Or they're going to already be, be paired with some of the greats um, like retinol. And that is also A-OK. -okay. So long story short, um, if you are on, in the market for tackling some of the skin concerns like wrinkles, um, texture, I believe even there's texture and elasticity, these three realms, um, there's definitely options there. And But that's it. That's the end of our episode. 